Next up, there were a few announcements a few years ago that caused a lot of commotion sort of in this field. When Bain entered this space, when BlackRock entered this space, when Goldman Sachs acquired Imprint, these are big mainstream financial players that are entering this space. And I think there's a feeling that this is great news because this takes this to scale, but there's also real curiosity about what does it look like for these large players to enter the impact space. So I'm really excited for you to hear directly from one of the members of the Bain Capital team today. Please welcome Chris Cazone to the stage. Thank you. Well, good morning, SoCap. Uh, it's a true honor to be here, uh, and both because uh, I actually look up to, to everybody in this room for all the positive change you've created, and you've inspired me to, to, in my career, but also because I've learned so much uh, from being at my third SOCAP and my first SOCAP, second SOCAP. So just thank you for being you. Um, I, I'm Chris Cazone. I'm, uh, I'm an investor in Bain Capital's Double Impact team, uh, and, I joined the, um, and I joined this team two years ago in the very, very early stages. Uh, and, and worked on the strategy. Before that, I was, I think what we call here, a traditional private equity investor. Um, and, uh, and, and the reason I did the transition in between private equity, uh, traditional private equity, and, and this new career was for the ambitious challenge we, we, we took on. The challenge which is, the problem we're trying to solve is one which is uh, maybe not as, uh, I would maybe say, unromantically laid out by, by the lady on this uh, New Yorker cartoon, is how can we prove to financial markets that there does not have to be a trade-off in between financial returns and private sector businesses, profitable ones, which want to have an intentional social environmental impact. Uh, that's not a new problem, and frankly, this cartoon might be older than myself. Uh, but we joined the band bandwagon, and two years ago, my boss, Deval Patrick, was on the stage. Uh, he announced that and we, we were going to take on this challenge, and not alone, but with the help of the community. Uh, in the past two years, we've done a lot of work, uh, and we've uh, taken a lot of your mentorship, so I want to thank you for that. And we're, we're at a new place, and we thought it was a good time to report. Back to you. So uh, we've, we've closed our first fund uh, over the summer, and we've done three investments. Um, and, uh, and look forward to sharing uh, how our thoughts have evolved and welcome your feedback after, after this conversation. So where do we focus? What are our impact themes? So first, sustainability, the health of the planet. Second, health and wellness, the health of people and populations. And third, uh, community building, which is about uh, place-based thesis, job creation for underserved populations. So today I want to speak about where do we play and why that's important. Of course, uh, as a bank capital investor, I had to show you numbers and charts, so I apologize, uh, apologize for that. Uh, and the question here is, we looked at the ecosystem of private funds in the, in the country, the US-focused ones to start with, and we realized that 20% of those, those funds were in, in the venture capital asset class. And that's a key critical part of our economy. It's responsible for innovation and the leaders of tomorrow. And more importantly for, the, for, for us in this room, it's the, the highest penetrated asset class when it comes to impact investing. Uh, impact investing in venture capital means finding and backing mission-driven entrepreneurs, uh, change the world mindsets, disruptive concepts, which will, be, uh, which, which will in turn be the new leaders of tomorrow. And that is a critical, uh, critical part of impact investing in, in the economy today. But stepping back, we looked at what are these other 80%? And we call the 80, other 80% the middle market. The 80, um, what is the middle market? To put it very simply, it's, it's the status quo. It's the US economy. It's, it's pretty much every sector. It's proven, mature, profitable businesses, sometimes growing really fast and sometimes not so fast. And stepping back, we realized, how can we add value to this sector? How can we potentially make it more impactful? Um, and another part which is very important in the middle market is the invest, uh, investment mindset is slightly different. Deals often are majority owned, high governance, deals where there's a the potential as an investor to be, have a strong seat at the table with management and we can ingrain our value-add uh, value mindset into, uh, into our investments. 
So of course, uh, as a former consultant, I got you a two by two matrix here. And at most two by two matrix, the holy grail is to be in the top right quadrant, right? And this is not so different. So here we're, we're the top right quadrant, what, it, what is it? It's businesses which we call have commercial clarity. Um, and that means profitable business models, proven uh, going concerns, and also have mission clarity, a clear mission aligned, intrinsically aligned with a business model idea. Top right quadrant here are rocket ships. They're change the world businesses. They're the dream of every impact investor. And we'd love if every single business were like that, but, but it's not always the case. And stepping back, we thought, with 33 years of Bain Capital's experience in being value-added investors and businesses and trying to, uh, tr trying to see what, you know, how you can grow them better, I thought, is there another part of this matrix where we can play, where we can be better impact investors? And so if you look at the bottom right here, there are businesses which are proven business models, which are profitable and going very well, but maybe they have mission potential. What do we call mission potential? It's a business where the, by tweaking potentially the operations, by creating new initiatives, we can align the mission-driven um, management team with creating more impact, more positive uh, uh, externalities, maybe reducing negative externalities. Conversely, on the top left of the matrix here, you know, imagine a social enterprise which has a great theory of change, but maybe has not exactly cracked what its business model is, hasn't reached scalability yet, still looking for product market fit. And that's where Bain Capital's playbook can help um, uh, be value adding. So what does this mean for deal flow, really? And you know, what, what we've, we know that you know, we're being highly scrutinized. We, we take that responsibility really seriously. If we're going to widen our aperture of looking at businesses and looking at not only intrinsically aligned businesses, but also some which have potential, where we're going to have to be active owners and really increase the impact, we risk greenwashing. And we're really aware of that. So we, we teamed up with our cousins from Bain & Company and did a wide bottom-up analysis of the whole US economy. We looked at 350 subsectors and scored them with our internal methodology, not only on financial returns, but also on how impactful their business model was intrinsically, and if there was mission potential. And what does that mean? It means that it widens your aperture of deals. Not only before just looking at mission clarity, only businesses, the rocket ships out there. There were about 10, 15% of the economy open for impact investing for us looking at mission potential and a value-added approach, opened almost 50%, and that's very exciting. But so how do we do it? And what's all this blueprint jargon I keep hearing and talking about? So a blueprint is, is the foundation of our value-add, and there's no rocket science there. Uh, it's basically sitting down with our management before the deal and building a strategy, short-term initiatives and a long-term plan. The key difference in between private equity owners out there and a Bain Capital Double Impact is this second box right here. We create an impact blueprint on top of the commercial blueprint. We look at initiatives which are ingrained in the business model, but which will also catalyze positive externalities. They'll reduce negative externalities. Another important point of the impact blueprints is the partnerships, the community. It's you in this room. And, and what really invites you to reach out if you feel you might be relevant and be able to help us in our investments here. Our three first investments we teamed up with thought leaders in the industry, like Bridges Ventures, like the SJF, like Pfizer Foundation, which has helped us think about the future of, of the biotech industry. And our, of course, we define impact metrics to keep our, our, our uh, management teams and ourselves accountable to, to the objectives we set. But let me just detail quickly what this means in practice. Impact Fitness is our, is our first investment in our portfolio. Um, and to put it very simply, is a rock star mission-driven management team who is running and operating uh, 13 gyms in Michigan and Indiana. Those are, uh, those are areas we've identified being in the bottom quartile of health outcomes in the US. And so we looked at this business being, how can we make this more impactful? One of the questions, which was pretty obvious, that, that came up looking at the geographies we're in is they're so-called fitness deserts, areas which don't have enough population density to be, have economically viable gyms. And that's 
something we, f we felt you know, could be a, a problem we, we could solve. So the first point here is access to fitness. It's one of our first tar uh, target outcomes. So we're currently working with the Plant Fitness franchisor and our management team to develop a new gym box which can fit in areas where there have never been gyms before. And that's creating access to fitness. What we're tracking is not only how many new members are coming to our gym, but we go to the next level. We look at what are the percentage of our new members who've never been to a gym in their lives. And to, in our CEO Chris Kleba's word, that would be getting people off the couch. And that's what drives him every morning to go to work. And that's the type of value add uh, that we try to bring to our companies. So where does this leave us? I want to I wanna leave you with two key messages. Number one is, we hear a lot, and, you, and, and with our name, you, with Bain Capital name used into the same sentence, impact investing is going mainstream. What I'd like to share is, if impact investing is going mainstream, we're going to have to invest in the mainstream economy. We're going to have to widen our aperture. We're going to have to create new approaches to invest in every business. And the way we've found it, we've cracked the case so far, and we really want your feedback on this, is, is through governance, through active ownership, through value-added approaches, which can find mission-aligned management teams in the middle market, in the, bro in, the, in the broader economy, and help them achieve their dreams and their mission. The second part is a call to action to all the traditional, traditional private equity and other investors out there. Get on board. Please get on board, reach out, be curious, ask questions. If you're not convinced, challenge us. We're really uh, excited in our team and we're, uh, we, we really see this as, um, this as, as a great, uh, exciting field, which it's really the beginning. Uh, we recognize that 30 years or 40 years or 50 years of thought and thought leadership has been put into trying to crack the case. Uh, it's, very, uh, it's very fitting to me that SOCAP is 10 years old this year because it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a child which is coming to, uh, to being a teenager, but 10 years away from being an adult. And these teenage years are going to be really exciting. We're going we're gonna to grow exponentially. We're going to make mistakes, uh, probably get in trouble here and there. But on top of that, we're, we're going to become adults together, and we're going to have a bunch of fun. So please join us. Thank you.